The Altenew stamp wheel is an essential tool for paper crafters and is for more than just stamping. In this tutorial, I will share 10 key ways the stamp wheel makes crafting easier for you. This is the stamp wheel from Altenew. Crafting materials I used in this video are linked in the description box. In this hardcover box contains the flip plate, sticky mat, and stage. Assembly instructions are found on the packaging on the sticky mat and stamp wheel box. The first step is to remove the clear protective film from the flip plate. Your flip plate should be a crystal clear acrylic with radiating etching. Next, you'll add your sticky mat to the stage. There is a flat side and grid textured side to this large photopolymer material. It will feel just like your photopolymer stamps. Place the grid textured side to the stage so that the flat side of the sticky mat is facing you. Finally, replace your flip plate onto the gold interlocking corners on your stage. Now let's get familiar with your stamp wheel with some first impressions. You can stick your cardstock anywhere on the 7.5 inch sticky mat. The sticky mat will hold your cardstock panel in place while you stamp. I'm using Build a Garden Rosa Gallica stamp set to demonstrate the accuracy, precision, and very basics of the stamp wheel. I'm picking a place to stamp this rose motif, and I have the flat side of the stamp facing me. Once I'm happy with the stamp placement, I'll bring in the flip plate and lock four of the points onto the stage. Gently press on the flip plate and pick up the stamp just like an acrylic block. This accommodates for the accuracy piece. In order to get precision stamping, all you have to do is flip the flip plate. I like to flip my plate vertically towards me, like 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and lock the flip plate to the stage. Then I can apply ink to the raised edges of the stamp. Once I've applied ink, I can flip the plates back, lock the corners onto the stage, and burnish the flip plate to stamp the image onto my cardstock. To repeat stamping, all I have to do is flip the acrylic plate, apply ink, and lock the corners of the flip plate to the stage, and I'll get precision stamping for this intricate image. Cleaning the stamp, flip plate, and sticky mat is important for crisp impressions and longevity of your crafting materials. It is not recommended to use abrasives or volatile solvents on any of the previously mentioned surfaces. I like a spray solution of soap and water or the Altenew Stamp Cleaner and a microfiber cloth. This is the basics of your Altenew Stamp Wheel. It is a precision stamping tool, stamp positioner, mixed medium mat, and an excellent supplement to your crafting tools. I enjoy the accessibility of the stamp wheel. If you have mobility challenges, I like that the sticky mat acts as a placeholder for one-handed crafting. So now I can leave my stamped cardstock unobstructed in the stamp wheel to color this panel. Once I'm done coloring, I can return stamps to my stamp wheel to add a sentiment. I can even add splatter embellishments to this panel with jet black and pure white ink sprays and a water brush. Now I can add this panel to a folded note card base and finish this very simple rose bouquet card. I have 10 essential card making tips to show you now that we have covered the basics of the stamp wheel. Make sure you use the video chapters if you need to reference these card making hacks in the future. Everyone knows Altenew makes some of the best floral layering stamps. I have Build a Flower Belladonna Lily, and this image consists of 8 individual layers. Believe it or not, we can stamp all eight of these images without ever removing them from the stamp wheel. Let's start by adding white cardstock to any corner of the sticky mat and stage. I will continuously use this placement as my reference. I'm starting with the outline layer of the stamp set and stamping the image in permanent black crisp ink from Altenew. Once I have a solid impression, I'll clean off the stamp and leave it on the flip plate. Following the layering guide, I'll move on to the A1 layer of Belladonna Lily and position the stamp to the outline of the previous image. I will do a quarter turn of the stamp wheel, 90 degrees, to position the flip plate to the stage and pick up the stamp. 
I can repeat stamp this layer until I get the saturation I want. I'm using Dusk from Cool Summer Nights All to New Crisp dye ink. Before moving on to the next layer, I'll clean the A1 stamp and rotate my stamp wheel clockwise another 90 degrees. After aligning the A2 layer to the stamped cardstock, I'll pick up the stamp on the stamp wheel and repeat the stamping process with Desert Night Crisp Dye Ink. I'll repeat the ink, stamp, turn process for the A3 layer. The outline, A1, A2, and A3 layers are all on the same side of the flip plate. For the remainder of the layers to Belladonna Lily, I will use the other side of the flip plate to cling my stamps to. I also rotated my flip plate 45 degrees so that I could see the stamp through the flip plate, but you don't have to do this. That's why my crosshair on the flip plate is now an X instead of a plus. Now I can keep working on layering the stamp with the A4 layer. This is the final layer to the petal images. As for the stems, I can rotate my wheel another 90 degrees and align the B1 layer, pick up the stamp with my flip plate and stamp the image. Again, rotate the stamp another 90 degrees and align the B2 layer, pick up the stamp with my flip plate and stamp the B2 layer. Then finally, rotate the wheel another 90 degrees and align all the lowercase A1, B1, C1, and D1 anther layers and stamp the image. I have four stamp layers on each side of the stamp wheel. This is how I am able to stamp an image with eight layers. The stamp wheel saves me the motion of having to remove and replace stamps for complex layering images. I'm not going to remove the stamps on both sides of my stamp wheel, however I am going to finish this card with die cut images. And that finishes my first tip of precision stamping with the stamp wheel. So here is my stamp wheel flip plate again with all 8 layering images, 4 on each side. My crafting dilemma when making mass produced cards is sacrificing a beautiful and intricate design with ease of repetition. Once you have aligned the images onto the stamp wheel flip plate, all you have to do is stamp the images again. If your final stamped image layer can fit two or even four on a panel, then you can take care of all the stamping steps quickly. Let me demonstrate what I mean. So not only can you rotate the stamp wheel images on the flip plate, but you can also rotate your cardstock on the sticky mat. Once I have stamped the outline layer once, I can pick up and rotate the cardstock 180 degrees, aligning the cardstock to the top left corner of my stage, then stamp the outline layer again. In other words, instead of stamping the image once per layer, you can stamp the image once, rotate the cardstock 180 degrees, and align your cardstock to the same reference point, and stamp the same image again before rotating the flip plate 90 degrees. The end result is two images on the same panel, and if you're feeling up to it, you can even double the repetition with another panel of white cardstock. It took me no time at all to stamp four complete Belladonna Lily images. And now I can work these flowers into a mass-produced card that doesn't compromise a beautiful design. Before we start wreath stamping, let's look at the innovative etching on the flip plate and how we can divide this flip plate into even segments. In the center is a perpendicular crosshair with 32 radiating lines to the corners of the flip plate. There are 16 outward facing corners to this plate, which means I can evenly divide the plate into 16, 8, 4, and 2 equal segments. As long as your image fits within the confides of one of these wedges, you will not need to mask the previously stamped image. Let's start with the Sokotoa stamp set from Altenew. I will use one of the smallest triangles to fit inside the etching of one of the wedges I have demonstrated. 
This means I can stamp this image evenly without overlap 16 times. I have my cardstock centered on my stage, but like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, your cardstock can go anywhere on the 7.5 inch square sticky mat. I'm going to keep building this abstract pattern with a larger triangle. Now this image fits within the etching lines of two wedges. This means I can evenly stamp without masking eight times around my cardstock. As I rotate my stamp clockwise around my stage, that means I'm counting two corners every time I stamp. This will come instinctively as you experiment on your own. I suggest picking up a stamp with amorphous or geometric shapes to practice wreath building on the stamp wheel. I would pick those instead of using your floral stamps at first to get yourself comfortable with the rotating and flipping motion of the flip plate. In the end, this turned out to be a pretty interesting design. I also did this with a smaller stamp. This is Mini Moon stamp set to make this Phase Moon card. So we covered 16 and 8 even segments. To demonstrate 4 equal segments, I used Crafter Life Project Kit, Hello Beautiful, to stamp this cluster 4 times. That little piece of satin masking tape helped mask a very small corner of a leaf that overlapped the previous image. Otherwise I ended up with an evenly spaced radial bouquet that filled my entire card panel. Lastly, to demonstrate a card panel bisected evenly, I'll use Build-A-Garden Pristine Peonies to stamp my image twice on my center-placed cardstock. You'll see that this large image fits on half of the flip plate. So now I can stamp this peony image twice onto my panel, and finish this card with very basic alcohol marker coloring. The stamp wheel is great for stamping, but with the addition of the sticky mats on the stage, we can also use the stamp wheel for other crafting applications. Gone are the days of using all of my masking tapes to hold down a piece of paper, especially for ink blending. I love this for differently abled crafters who have mobility challenges, or if you have a hand injury that prevents you from using both hands, to now use a dominant grip for ink blending, freeing the other hand from having to hold down cardstock. And I know if you have ink blended before, one of the ways to ruin a panel is if the paper buckles from the force of ink blending. That problem is also solved with the sticky mat on the stage since the paper is held in place on the sticky mat. So anyway, I turned this ink blended panel into an embossed card with the Folk Arts Motif 3D embossing folder from Altenew. I ran the ink blended panel through my embossing folder once, then before removing the cardstock from the embossing folder, I put Enchanted Gold Pigment Ink onto the flatter side of the embossing folder to relief print the ink onto the ink blended panel. I added a sentiment to complete this gilded ink blended statement background. To build on the sticky mat capabilities, I'm starting with a folded panel of Golden Days Hot Foil Plates from Altenew. Not only does this sticky mat have the ability to grip paper, but it holds onto the material that stencils are made out of as well. Again, this saves me so much of my satin masking tape to use for holding down steel dies for die cutting, or holding hot foil plates when using my hot foiling system. I can easily overlay the stencil on top of the cardstock and apply ink as I would normally with any other stencil. I save myself so much time by eliminating the step where I apply a repositionable tape to my cardstock and stencil. What I'm left with is the same stunning layers with less of the fuss of tape. I finish this card with metallic splatters and a foiled sentiment. Don't forget the stamp wheel is also great for all stencils, not just the layering kind. One thing you might have noticed about the sticky mats when you assemble the stamp wheel is that it is essentially a giant photopolymer stamp. One side is flat, and the other side is a textured grid. We can use this to our advantage when making beautiful abstract backgrounds. I'm starting with a watercolor panel from Altenew. 
With a water-soluble ink, I'm applying color directly to the flat side of the sticky mat. Then with a fine spray water bottle, I'm using the Fine Mister from Altenew, I can saturate and suspend the ink on the sticky mat and pick up the ink onto my watercolor panel. I can dry the panel between applications to intensify the color or build layers with other colors. By the way, just like any photopolymer stamp, the sticky mat is susceptible to ink staining. This does not affect its performance or inhibit the stickiness. We can also use the grid side of the sticky mat to add a modern element to the amorphous watercolor background. I'm using the sticky mat grid just like a stamp and pressing the dry background to some ink on the sticky mat's grid. I love this contemporary take on the ink smoosh background. I think it adds a nice balanced element to this scene. I finished this card with images from Goldfish Pond stamp set from Altenew. Now we know the stamp wheel sticky mat is essentially a large photopolymer stamp. This means we can make some pretty interesting stamp scenes with some inking techniques. I'm starting with Cat Live Stamp Set and stamping one of the images normally onto a panel of white cardstock. Again, I'm using the top left corner of the stage as my reference points for the cardstock. To stamp the mirror of this image, I'll remove the cardstock from the stage and apply ink to the stamp as I normally would. This time, I'll apply the ink to the flat side of the sticky mat instead of paper. Then to stamp this ink to the cardstock, I'll align the cardstock to the top left corner of my stage and gently burnish the cardstock to the area where the ink lies on the stage. From my practice runs, I got much deeper saturation with the Obsidian Pigment ink from Altenew instead of dye inks. After a few layers of mirror ink stamping, I was able to get an exact mirror of my original cat image on the left. The key is to ensure a good reference point for your cardstock. In my case, I use the top left corner of my stage. And as long as you keep this in mind, you can even apply layered images to mirror stamped outlines. So I'll stamp the fur patch layer of the cat's outline as I would normally. Then I'll use a pigment ink to stamp onto the sticky mat. Then transfer that ink onto the mirrored cat outline, following my top left corner position of the stage. Die cutting the mirror image is where this gets slightly ambitious. In order to cut this image, you'll need to align the die to the back side of the image. I used a light pad to look through the cardstock and align the die to the outline on the back side. What I'm left with is this cute symmetrical cat scene with the help of mirror stamping on the stamp wheel. We already know the advantages of the stamp wheel sticky mats for holding down cardstock for stamping and ink blending. This is especially helpful for layering dies, like this Craft of Flowers Sulfur Cosmos die set. Not only can we use the sticky mat to hold down individual pieces of cardstock, but we can also use the mat to hold the layers for assembly as well. I recommend using a liquid glue that can easily wash off with soap and water, and avoid using enamel-based glues that may permanently stick to the photopolymer stamp or stamp wheel in general. But now I can apply glue directly to the die cut image while on the stage of my stamp wheel, and they can be held in place while building the layers of the flower. All I have to do is align my cardstock using either the keyhole or arrow alignment cuts on my cardstock to easily assemble the Cosmos flowers. And of course, this is helpful with these really intricate dies as well when ink blending. These fine leaf images are prone to buckling when applying ink with a brush, and the sticky mat does an excellent job of holding down the die cut cardstock. Before I finish the previous card, I have other tricks with the stamp wheel that will help with assembly. I love Altenew's large format washi tapes. Applying a full card panel of tape is now easier than ever. Simply position your cardstock to one side of the stage, adhering it to your sticky mat. Then unravel the tape slightly longer than your card panel. Then all you have to do is press the washi tape to the cardstock 
and trim the excess. No more slipping and sliding of the cardstock or static lifting your cardstock onto the tape. Now I get perfect placement for my washi tape backgrounds. Okay, so we are almost done with this Sulphur Cosmos card. It just needs a uh, sentiment. Getting perfect placement for die cut sentiments can be quite challenging with these textured cards, especially if there is a lot of forward height to the card with foam squares or instant dimension foam tape. To combat this, I'm using one side of the stage as my alignment for my card panel and placing the whole card panel to my sticky mat platform. Then with your T-square ruler, I got mine for super cheap at a big box store, I can use it as a horizontal reference line to foam mount my sentiment to my floral bouquet. Now this card is finally finished and it was made simple with the Altenew stamp wheel. That was 10 essential tricks to the Altenew stamp wheel. I hope you found this video as a great place to reference stamp wheel techniques. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. I have more videos planned in the very near future. Otherwise, I'm very active on Instagram. Make sure you find me at jc.gaspar. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon.